a pleasure for me to announce uh, another talk by Swante Janssen. It's a joint work with uh, Philip Jacquet on depth first third performance in a random bike graph with geometric degree distribution. Swante, please go ahead. Yes, thank you. So first I should explain that uh, as uh, uh, Michael already said, this is a uh, joint work with Philip Jacquet. And uh, the reason now I'm giving two talks here, nice to see you again, by the way, hi, hi. Uh, is that uh, uh, we had planned that Philip would give this talk, but then unfortunately he had to do some important business uh, this week, and especially today, uh, which he couldn't refuse, so therefore I will give also this talk. Uh, and uh, say more about background, I should also say that this uh, come from question from Donald Cluse. Uh, he was, uh, well, as you know, he's uh, still uh, writing on his uh, book, uh, The Art of Computer Programming. And uh, when he was uh, working on section uh, 74.1.2 about half a year ago, he wrote and asked uh, some questions. And uh, uh, I, uh, I and Philippe initially, we, I think we solved. Uh, we had some answers, some part answers. I think initially we had uh, answer to different parts of his questions, but uh, we uh, joined forces and uh, uh, we eventually wrote this joint paper uh, with uh, some more answers. Uh, and uh, I should also say that, uh, so of course we have the paper now in the AOFA proceedings. And uh, uh, if you look at the references there, you can find if you're interested, uh, uh, link to the uh, current, uh, to Donald Knut's uh, latest uh, uh, draft of this section, in case you want to see the, more about the background. Uh, also, I should say that I and Philip are writing a longer full paper where we have uh, more results than I have time to mention today. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't finished it yet, but that means on the other hand, if you have some interesting comments, we can incorporate them in the full version before we finish it. Uh, okay, so as I said, the background is uh, some questions by Don Knuth, and uh, what we do is we answer some of them. Uh, and I've already said this. Uh, I should also say, since I mentioned this in my Trashelier lecture, uh, I there combined using generating uh, functions and probabilistic method. Here we don't really combine in the same way, but uh, uh, same thing here, that some of these results were first proved uh, by one of us uh, using generating functions. Uh, uh, so they certainly have a role here too, but I don't have the time to mention them today. So let's uh, proceed now first to the question of the model. Uh, so the question is about depth first search in a diagram. So I guess that most of you know depth first search, but I'll give a quick definition here. Uh, so we start. Uh, with an arbitrary vertex. Uh, for this problem, it doesn't really matter if it's random or deterministic, uh, since the graph will be random. Uh, then we explore the arc from that vertex one by one. Uh, and uh, we do this in a depth first way. So when we find an arc which leads to vertex that we have not seen before, uh, we move there and then we uh, go on recursively, we explore all arcs from that vertex. Uh, uh, until we're finished, and then we'll uh, return back uh, to the first vertex. Uh, and when we don't find any more arcs, that means that we have uh, created a tree containing all descendants of the first vertex. Uh, so uh, if there are any verte vertices left in the diagram, we start again with a new vertex and repeat and find a new tree and so on until we've explored all vertices. Uh, and uh, if we find, I should say, or add, if you find an arc which leads to vertex we've already seen, we just ignore that arc and proceed to the next one. So in that way, uh, we will create a spanning forest in general, the depth first forest. Uh, and note that even if the diagram happens to be uh, connected, uh, we may very well end up with uh, lots of different components here, of course, we, unless we're very lucky and start at the right place. If we have start, for example, with a tree, we, uh, if you don't start uh, at the root, you will not uh, get the whole tree in the first, uh, for the first component. Uh, 
So here is an example which we have just taken from a Don Knut's uh, book. He gave, it, gave, it, uh, gave us permission to use this. Uh, and uh, uh, so we have 10 vertices, and uh, uh, I think there are 21 arcs here. Uh, so just to remind you again of definition, if we start with vertex number nine, as uh, his uh, version of the argument does, uh, then the first arc leads to seven, so we include that. Uh, but then there are no arcs from seven. So we return to nine, go to the next arc, which leads to three. Uh, but from three, uh, there is an arc to one. Uh, from one, there is an arc to six. From six, there is an arc to two. Uh, from two, there is an arc back to six. So we ignore that. And there's another arc uh, to three, which we see. So we ignore that. And an arc to seven, we ignore that. Uh, so then there are no more arcs. We backtrack to six, and they find another arc to four. Uh, and then uh, we, we ignore some more arcs and have to backtrack all the way back to, well, three, where it's just a loop, which we ignore, and back to nine, and then we find out to five, and so on. So uh, that means that the arcs we keep, so that first tree will be formed by the solid arcs here, and the doctor ones are the ones we ignore. Uh, and uh, I, as you see from this uh, picture, when I say digraph here, I really mean di-multigraph. We allow loops and multiple uh, arcs, but uh, they will not be important. You can really ignore them if you want. Uh, so what we do is we analyze this algorithm in a random digraph, and the random digraph uh, we look at, of course, we can construct random digraphs in many ways, but uh, one we, or rather what Knuth asked for initially, uh, is we take a random digraph with a fixed number of vertices, n vertices, and we have a random out degree for each vertex, and the out degrees are independent and identically distributed. Some distribution p. Uh, so when we have decided how many arcs we have from vertices, we just choose the endpoints of these arcs randomly with the replacements. We just choose uh, one by one independently, uniform among all, all vertices. And that is how we can get loops, and we can also get multiple arcs. But you realize that uh, since n is big, and uh, we will have uh, not too many arcs uh, from, uh, I mean, we have some fixed distribution uh, with a finite every uh, number of arcs on each vertex, we will have very few loops and multiple edges. That means typically we will be big over one loops and multiple arcs uh, among these order n arcs. And we consider an isentotics as n goes to infinity or fixed degree distribution. Uh, and the uh, natural extension would be to let the degree distribution depend on n, and maybe especially in some critical case, when we approach the critical case, you can see what happens in more detail, but uh, uh, we, uh, we ignore that we just let the distribution be fixed. Uh, here I said, yes. Uh, and we used, of course, the standard trick here in, uh, that would generate this random diagram while we do the algorithm. Uh, so we don't reveal the out degrees until we need them. Each time we visit a new vertex, we solve its out degree. Uh, and uh, Knut's initial question was about the particular case when this out degree distributes the geometric uh, with parameter one minus p, take that way. Uh, and the reason he was interested in that is that in this case, the process is more almost memory free, you say. Uh, we don't have to keep track of the number of arcs we already have uh, seen or visited from a uh, certain vertex. Uh, each time we either arrive at the vertex or we return to vertex after having visited some children, we just do the same thing. We toss a coin and we probability p, uh, we construct and follow a new arc. Uh, but with probability one minus p, we conclude that uh, that well, there are no more arcs from that vertex. Uh, so we leave that and return to its parent. Uh, and uh, but this uh, is a geometric one minus p. I tend to confuse myself, uh, but I have, to, I have checked that this is uh, parameter is one minus p and not p here. Uh, so this is of course uh, a nice thing, and we'll see uh, the basis of our uh, of our, uh, our solution is, uh, is this nice memory-free uh, property. 
So that is why most, uh, my talk today will be mainly about this geometric case. But I can uh, reveal already right now that uh, after having done that case, uh, I and Philip also proceeded to the general case with a, with a somewhat more complicated argument, which I won't have time to uh, tell you today. Maybe uh, just a quick uh, comment on it at the end. Uh, so what I'll tell you today will be about the simpler geometric case, but there are extensions to more general distributions, uh, which is what I just wrote here. So now we're going for geometric out, uh, degrees. We assume it's geometric, and therefore the mean number of arcs from each vertex is, is p, so one minus p. And notation is we number the vertices in the order we see them in this step first search and d of t, the depth of the t uh, vertex uh, in this step first forest, uh, forest. So depth is number of edges that connects it to the uh, root. We start with uh, zero of the root. And uh, the, uh, the crucial thing in the analysis is that now with geometric algebra distribution, this quantity will follow the Markov chain with some uh, simple transitions, so I don't uh, go into all details here, but the uh, point is that it can either, depth can increase by one. Well, that obviously happened when we, uh, when we have proceeded uh, the tree we are some. Uh, if we, maybe we'll also check some other uh, children. We check an arc from this vertex. If it uh, leads to a new vertex, which we haven't seen before, uh, then that will, uh, uh, that will have a depth which is one more. Uh, but it can also happen that we first visit some, or uh, first go to some uh, vertices which we haven't seen before. Uh, so uh, that means we ignore them. Uh, it really means we have something like this. So it, it, that happens for K, but uh, K minus one arcs first, which we have already seen, and then the K arc uh, leads to vertex we have seen. Uh, the probability of that is precisely what I write here. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, we sum that over all K and get a certain probability of getting the next one. Uh, now, if this does not happen, uh, what can happen, so that means that we uh, maybe see, have some children, but all of them lead to previous vertices. Well, then uh, we know I come back here, and then I should proceed with the next uh, children of its parent. Uh, and that again has a geometric distribution, and we have the same argument again. It may happen that we have a certain number, say k minus one of them, uh, leading to vertices we have seen before, but then the case one is a uh, new one. Well, in this case, I get a new vertex on the same level. So that's the t plus one is equal to t. And I do simply exactly the same relation as in step one, uh, except that I have to do it twice, so I get the result there in formula two. Uh, but if that fails, uh, then I go back one step more, but then I do precisely the same thing. Uh, and in general, or maybe I go down n steps here. Uh, or go down n plus one step to parent and find a child of it. Uh, so I reduce the depth by L. Uh, and uh, I have a formula, uh, formula three with a power L plus one. Uh, but then it may all uh, what's happened, I was cheating a little because it could be uh, the case that I uh, get down to the root already, so I have to, uh, then I can't proceed any further. So that gives us more multiplication in the fourth case here. Uh, and in that case, it really means that I go down here to root, I haven't found anything. Uh, so that's the uh, final most, that's the case when I have completed this uh, tree and I proceed to the next root, uh, which then has uh, depth zero. So the formula is correct here. Uh, so the fourth case is precisely when I start a new tree. So we can now summarize this in a nice uh, probabilistic formula. First one, I can write this dt plus one is 
dt plus one minus some psi of t, which is a geometric random variable, except that uh, if this becomes negative, I have to replace by zero. That's why I have the max in the first line. Uh, and if you look at the probabilities, uh, if you remember all probabilities you saw quickly in the last previous slide here, you see that this psi of t is precisely a random variable independent of the previous history with a geometric distribution uh, with this parameter pi of t, uh, which I've written out explicitly. So it's a simple uh, function of this p. Remember that p is a fixed parameter in our algebraic distribution, but t varies here. So this pi of t will uh, increase as uh, time passes. Uh, okay, so we have this maximum in the first formula, but uh, what we do first is we ignore this maximum thing and define this d tilde t. That's the sum of these increments or differences, I should say, if we didn't have the maximum thing to begin with. That's just the sum of independent random variables with some, well, not identical, but it's some simple distribution, so it's easy to treat this thing. And then it's easy to see by induction that formula over here that. The real depth is this d tilde minus the minimum of d tilde uh, up to the uh, present time. So, of course, that's something uh, non negative, which is fine. That's what we want. So, if I try to draw a picture again here, if we have uh, d tilde, maybe it looks uh, something like this. Uh, and if d tilde is something like this, uh, well, then at the some time here. Oh, I look at the previous round here is the minimum. So then this is my D of T. And I should say that this is very similar to formulas uh, that used by, for example, orders and a lot of other people as well, when uh, studying random graphs and uh, crease and so on. And this thing to have some nice process with the independent increments or almost independent increments in some other cases. Uh, and then you uh, subtract the previous minimum to get something positive, get a nice excursion is so something we've seen in other cases too. Uh, one thing which is a bit unusual here is that this D tilde may have negative jumps of arbitrary size, uh, meaning, for example, all this case, the negative jump would just minus one. So that's little bit complication analysis, but same idea. Well, we can easily compute the expectation uh, here of uh, uh, the tilde uh, with an integral approximation. Uh, we have this function L tilde A to theta is T over M, scale time here. And uh, this will, well, there are two cases, first of all. Uh, if lambda, so lambda was the average of degree, now remember that. If uh, we have this uh, formula here, and uh, well, uh, let me draw a typical picture of something like this. Uh, this is uh, my L tilde, which is now an approximation of the tilde of the over n. Okay, so. T or n goes up to one, so that is T to uh, uh, The derivative of this is uh, strictly increasing, so it will be a concave function. This, which will go to minus infinity as we go to one, as you can see here on my blackboard, if you see the blackboard. Uh, so there are now really two cases. The derivative at the origin is, uh, I think, lambda minus one. Uh, so if lambda is bigger than one, this is the test bigger one. Uh, it will be positive here. It will become zero at some point, and then as I go to minus infinity. Uh, the other case, if lambda is less than one, it will look something like this, which is uh, less interesting, maybe. So in the supercritical case, we call this, we have log like this. Now, this was the mean. Uh, and uh, I should say here this called theta one, which solves equation one minus theta one is e to minus lambda theta one, which is a formula you may recognize if you studied the uh, example Bronte processes. It's the survival probability of a Walter Watson process with the force of lambda offspring. Or if you have studied uh, random graphs, 
and the Ergovenia model, uh, this is the uh, relative size of the giant component uh, there when lambda is p times uh, n, that's constant, asymptotically. So uh, again, because of connection with the Gordon Watson process. Uh, so this was the mean, and then of course we have some fluctuation around it, but think of this as good approximation of p tilde. Uh, so we have, uh, of course, the convergence here, that the d tilde who writes gaining really convergence to uh, this thing. And that means d, remember that d was a d tilde minus previous minimum. So here in the beginning, the previous minimum, well, maybe slightly less than zero, but very, uh, but uh, that will disappear in the limit. So D will follow this uh, up until here. But then D tilde becomes negative and it will be essentially very close to its previous minimum all the time. So D will continue over here. So that's what I call L tilde uh, plus. Uh, so L tilde plus uh, is just the maximum L tilde zero. And that is roughly my D will be. Uh, with a proper scale. So the depth will uh, look like this curve here, drop down to zero and then be hollow here, be very small, actual order of square root of entity. Uh, and uh, if we interpret that, it means that maybe we have a few small trees in the beginning here, which we don't really see at this scale. Uh, but then we will have, here the depth will positive all the time, there are no more roots, which means that this will be one big tree. Uh, so one big component in the depth of uh, forest, uh, which has this size, uh, well, time set. And then after here, we will again have lots of small trees. We will uh, just find new roots all the time and have uh, lots of small trees, and there will be a linear number of them. We can actually uh, compute more precise asymptotic, so precisely how many there are, but I will skip that for a reason of time. So linear managed more trees uh, at the end of process. Moreover, I just said we have convergence here. I don't write down as I figure, but uh, actually we have some Gaussian fluctuations at here formula. If I subtract n times this from my depth and divide by square root of n, I have convergence to certain continuous Gaussian process in this range up here. Um, and what happens is that I get convert for d tilde. Uh, all the way well, up to one minus epsilon at least. Uh, and then that restricts here, I get the same thing for D. And we have some, uh, some formula for the variance also. So in particular, if we look at the maximum point here, uh, which will be at the point one, one, one of lambda, if you do simple calculus, uh, we'll see that the largest depth will be very close here. Remember, we have some small Gaussian fluctuations around it, but to a first order, it shows that the height of the forest, so the maximum depth, is just this constant here, which we call uh, epsilon to make uh, just for a change, uh, times n, uh, plus some error of order of square root of n. And we can compute precisely what uh, that is. And actually, one gets uh, has normal fluctuations, as I said. Uh, we can write down explicit asymptotic variance as well. Similarly, we can get the average depth. Uh, well, the average depth with some all depths here and uh, divide by n. So uh, in the limit, it will be just the integral of this function here plus the integral of zero here. Uh, and if we compute this integral, we get the value alpha I've written here. Uh, and if, uh, well, I think, yes. Uh, of course, it's zero if lambda is less than one, but lambda is bigger one, we get something positive. So one thing we can notice here that the trees we constructed this way, they will have if p is bigger than half, so lambda is bigger than one. Uh, the height here, I mean, this will be a positive number, so the height will be uh, linear in that, which is a bit unusual. I mean, we are really used to uh, random trees which have heights which are either logarithmic or uh, root them or maybe some other power. Uh, of course, this means that uh, this maybe is not very efficient. If you really want to construct this uh, tree and reduce it explicitly for some 
uh, purpose uh, may uh, it may be uh, very uh, slow for us algorithm. So, uh, but um, uh, that's not really the point of that first search. It's more a representation of uh, of what happens. Uh, in the depth uh, search, the some tree that you actually construct the use. But of course, in principle, one can do so, but then maybe it's not uh, so fast in practice. Well, uh, so those were, say, some at least typical, uh, some of those are main results. Uh, typical results here. I uh, can find a few more in the, uh, in the abstract, in the proceedings. I also want to mention another type of uh, results here because that was also asked by Don Knuth at the same time. Here we are back, same picture as before of uh, this depth first forest, and this is what he called depth first jungle. Because, as I said, the solid uh, arcs here are the ones that uh, end up in the depth first tree, but then we have all the other arcs, the ones that we ignored, and they actually are classified into uh, four. Uh, well, three different types. Uh, no, four different types. Uh, we have loops. Well, you know what they are. Uh, but uh, otherwise, there is, for example, an arc from two to three here, uh, which we ignored for the reason that when we came to two, it led back to a vertex that we'd seen before, which happened to be a parent or no, an ancestor of the vertex we are. So that's called a backup. On the other hand, there's now from nine to seven, there's a tree arc there in the tree, but there's also a second one later that leads from vertex nine to a descendant that we have already visited by some previous arcs. Uh, so that's called a forward arc. Uh, and then the other arcs that we ignore are called cross arcs, for example, the one from eight to four. So they go to uh, some other part of the tree where we've been before. Uh, so Donna Clues asked about a number of uh, these things, and there are some results. So if you uh, read his, uh, it's now a section of coming, uh, coming next volume book. Uh, and here is a, a result on the number of them, at least the average of well, concentration. Uh, if we have a number of loops, three arcs, and back arcs, and forward arcs, and cross arcs, uh, so loops are very few. A constant number essentially, uh, Poisson distributed. Uh, but the other are linear with some constants, and it turns out that these constants for a number of tree arcs and, uh, and uh, cross arcs are the same, and for back and forward arcs are the same constants. Uh, and then there are some fluctuations of order root n. Uh, we conjecture that these are in Carlson, but we haven't proved that yet. Uh, and actually, much more is said. Uh, this was uh, all something close uh, conjectured from numerical uh, data. We could prove that uh, we have actually exact equality of the expected number of tree arcs and cross arcs and also back and forward arcs. Uh, and uh, for the equality, actually, now we have some simple argument why these are uh, equal, uh, expected values are the same, but I don't have time to give it now. With one minute left, though. But also, I should say that Lutz actually conjectures that the back and forward arcs have precisely the same distribution for every finite n, uh, which we have not proved yet, but uh, some hope that we can be able to do it uh, using generating functions. Uh, trees and cross arcs certainly do not have the same distribution, but they have the same mean. Uh, let me finally just say what happens for a general out degree distribution. Uh, the depth is no longer a mark of chain because now uh, you have to keep track of how many arcs you already have uh, seen or checked from a vertex. Uh, so instead, we have another uh, construct, another mark, uh, mark of chain. This depth for search uses a stack of uh, unexplored arcs, and we count how many we have in this stack. So uh, this stack, new stack is empty, we pick a new vertex, and otherwise we pop the last arc from the stack. And we really need its endpoint. And if we have seen the endpoint, we ignore it and repeat. Uh, and then when we get a new vertex, we reveal its arc degree and add those new arcs to the stack and with some unspecified endpoints. We uh, reveal endpoints only when we need them. Uh, and in this case, the size of the stack now will be a mark of chain. And we will have a very uh, similar uh, stochastic recursion as before. Uh, 
And uh, we can prove in the same way that th this will convert to something which looks more or less like this. It's not exactly the same curve, but some similar one. Uh, and uh, then it's possible to uh, get back the depth from this function of stack size, how it depends on t. Uh, and uh, uh, in that way, we can, with some uh, uh, more work in this case, but we can get many of the results. Uh, we can prove also for general out of the sum of. Uh, results are really special, specific for geometric ones, like this identity I said about number of uh, arcs of the uh, reptiles, tree arcs and cross arcs on. And some results we have not been able to prove, uh, or not with at least as good error estimates, but many results extend. Uh, and uh, that's all I have to say. Dante, thank you very much for your talk. Some questions, the audience? Or yeah, I have a question, uh, Svante. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, uh, Bob. Uh, I think there's many uh, interesting uh, questions here, and I have a particular one I wonder if you thought about or might consider. Uh, and that is, uh, there's applications where you want to stop the process once you've seen all the vertices. And so the question is, what is the number of edges examined on average uh, when uh, you uh, first encounter the last vertex? Uh, yes, I think that the, uh, uh, I'm feeling that you have, uh, you really have to go through this or I mean, you have to go through this to the end so you, uh, it should be possible to find a more precise answer. Uh, yeah, I cannot say it off top of my head, but it could follow uh, from this. I, I think that you actually will have checked uh, almost all uh, oxy because... Uh, I, I'm not so sure about that. No, uh, that I no. think, uh, uh, for certain special graphs, uh, it's only maybe n log n arcs. Uh, so yes. That is at the beginning, yeah, you might never get back to those, you know. Uh, yes. It's not, it's not clear. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree, but I think that for this uh, random diagram, uh, there will be uh, enough uh, vertices where, where, you will, where you will return. And uh, before returning, you will have uh, checked almost all previous uh, arcs. So I, uh, I'm not oh. sure, but my feeling now is that for this uh, random diagram, uh, you really will have to check uh, uh, not all, but most of the arcs. Okay, well, uh, let's uh, make a bet on that. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, maybe bad news, but that's what I think happens. Okay. So there, thanks. Great. There is a question from the audience. I will wait till the other hour. Yeah, so, so just ask, ask a question, please. Uh, can, we, can we try the microphone? Wow, it's a microphone. Oh, wow. Wow. Wow, that's like great. Okay, please ask. Uh, so I have a simple question. Uh, I was wondering, like, for that privilege on the part, like you showed us later, will that just be a concatenation? of the depth reward and then corresponding to reflective value motion, is that correct? Oh, I'm sorry, I could only hear this partially. This is, this is, someone repeat it. This is the microphone. Oh, this is, sorry, I just so fast. So please repeat. Um, oh, so sorry. Yeah. Uh, sorry, so I was wondering for um, depth reward on um, the forest instead of on the tree, like you showed us later. Yeah, that tends to be a concatenation, and then also into this massive running motion. You said you're interested in the depth first walk on this tree. Oh, on the forest. Uh, on the forest, yes. Yeah, so we that tends to be a concatenation, and that's not something to uh, reflect the well, yes, uh, I, and that is, uh, well, uh, uh, well, if I understood the question correctly, I think that this relates what I said about this, how this uh, depth uh, behaves as a function of P. And then, as I said, this will be like a Gaussian process uh, and it's uh, almost, uh, almost 
uh, like a browning motion. Uh, but uh, this is uh, uh, but this is quite different from uh, uh, say brown discussion thing we typically get for our random uniform trees and so on. Uh, since here it is a much more deterministic thing with small bounds and fluctuations. Um, okay. Jim Thank has you. a question. Uh, James Bailey has a question. Yes, Sandra, I have a question. Your talk featured a parameter that was related to or could be expressed in terms of the survival probability of a Galton Watson process mm -hmm. with yes. Galton Watson tree with uh, Poisson offspring distribution. And the question is do you have a direct probabilistic understanding of that? That is, is there some tree with a Poisson offspring distribution lurking in the process here somehow, or is it just a coincidence as far as you know? Well, I wouldn't call it coincidence. Uh, let me say, uh, well, here I've talked about geometric offspring distribution, but uh, as I said, we also extend this more general case. And if we take the case of a Poisson offspring distribution instead, uh, that is, uh, then this model of the digraph is, uh, uh, well, it's a digraph, but it's uh, almost the same. If we do depth first search in this digraph, it's essentially the same as doing depth first search in the uh, undirected uh, graph where we have Poisson uh, degree distribution, which is essentially the same as uh, an Erdős Rieni graph. Uh, and in that case, uh, I can really prove that these are essentially the same. Uh, and in that case, uh, we, of course, have the well known. Uh, approximation uh, with the uh, Walter Watson branching process, uh, and therefore this equation for the size of Jan component. Uh, so uh, there is a really strong connection to those results here. And then the fact that we have this same uh, also for other out degree distributions, well, I think maybe you're right that there is some uh, Walter Watson process lurking around here, uh, but I I can't see clear, but I think that if you look at it the right way, you should be able to uh, to find such a process uh, hidden in this uh, exploration. Thanks, Fante. I think we have to stop the questions because we have another talk. So thanks again for the presentation. And